<laughs> All right, hello and welcome everybody to your Flight Sim Fan video. We're back in DCS World talking about the new A10C2 tank killer. It's a brand new upgrade that came to the A10 Classic. All right, a little history on me. I started playing DCS when I was about 15, 16 years old, about uh, six years ago, something like that now. Uh, this simulation and uh, P3D FSX really hit home the passion of flying. Uh, so I did decide to pursue that in real life. I, I have my Canadian ATP uh, frozen now, and uh, it's frozen ATP. Uh, flying has always been the dream. Obviously, the job market now is uh, there's pretty much non-existent, <laughs> so there's nothing better to do is to stay home and self-isolate and play DCS World with uh, all your buddies. It's really fun when a new airplane comes out like this. So we're going to talk about how to buy this aircraft and how to install it. And we'll be talking about its new features, a little bit of different looks, some controls you gotta be mindful of from the old one to the new one, and of course the brand new humped mounted queuing system, which is my favorite thing in this game. Almost, it's a, uh, it's almost like cheating. You just point and shoot now <laughs> on the ground. Uh, all right, so we'll get into that. All right, guys. So now we're in DCS uh, website, DCSWorld.com, and you find yourself on this page. So we're gonna have to talk about how you're gonna order this module. First thing you need to do is you need to make an account and log in at the top right there and once you've logged in if you've previously owned the A10 it, the, your account will pick that up and uh, the A10 will be a cheaper price if you did not own the A10 it'll be the full price of the uh, A10 module so we'll go here modules and as I've said if you've owned the A10 it'll be $9.99 if you do not own the A10 it'll be $79.99 for the A10 C2 tank killer. Okay, all you do is hit buy, run through the process, either PayPal or credit card, and uh, once it says complete, you open DCS up, and DCS will have uh, the module there, and we'll show you how to install it to uh, DCS as well. All right, so when you've ordered your A10 and you, it says complete on the website, you're going to open your DCS client, and just to let you know, I'm running the current open beta standalone version of this uh, game, not the Steam version. Uh, what you're going to do is simply go up to the top, and you'll have a little one like this. And you're going to click this box, and this is obviously not the A10, but what happens with this window would pop up saying A10C Tank Killer. Would you like to install? You make sure the check mark's in, you hit OK, and it'll start installing it. Okay, and that's how to install it, and then it'll show up on your, uh, it'll show up on this page here, and you'll notice that the A10 II Tank Killer will be highlighted and it'll be colored in instead of black and white, and you can set as your wallpaper. All right, now that you found how to buy the aircraft, uh, you see they had two models there. Uh, I actually did the upgrade because I had the A10 from before. It's been uh, was my main bird for a couple of years till the you know some of the you know Hornet and 16, all the other aircraft came out, and I started flying kind of everything now. But uh, we're going to take a look at the sights and sounds. We're going to compare it to the old A10, and we're going to look at the new one. Just off the bat here, I can tell you that this A10 model looks a lot crisper and cleaner looking. Um, not physical cleaner because there's actually some dirty uh, liveries that you can put on, but uh, just looking at the detail of it, all the little rivets, uh, all the lines are nice and, and uh, crisp and clean. You can see on the, uh, just under the pilot's name there, all the lines and the rivets, you can just really see them, and it looks great. Uh, you'll notice that the, um, there's a little pod here, I forget what this was called, but there's a little pod, a little camera pod that was to the right of the gun. That's actually gone now. We'll go look at it at the old A-10. Um, I think it was TCS pod. Uh, Maybe a Tomcat thing, but anyways, uh, that's gone now. So little things like that are are there. Uh, Sound-wise, it sounds great. If I uh, bring the sounds up, I mean, probably can't even hear me anymore. But it sounds awesome. Even every every throttle change, one engine. The autopilot is probably messing up quite a bit. <laughs> I mean, the engine sounds are great. And uh, that's kind of looking around here in the, in the cockpit. Let me bring the sounds back down. Taking a look inside. Looks pretty much the same. Um, I do notice everything's a little, a, a tiny bit crisper. I don't know if that's actually a... I don't know if they did that or if it's... Because it looks... I mean, the, the A10, the old one, just had a cockpit overhaul anyways. Uh, what is different is they took out some panels, as you can notice. 
that one's gone. Uh, the one below the stick is gone. And they've added some panels as well for us, and that controls our helm mounted display, which we'll get into later. Alright, guys, now we're back in the uh, classic A10. I'll start calling it the classic A10, and we'll do the same thing. We'll look at the sights and sounds and a bit of the flight model. And I'm already wrong. You see, this rope actually was not bigger. Uh, I think they did this in the cockpit upgrade from before. You notice that the cockpit right off the bat is a little less crisp. Um, at least that's what I see on my screen. Just a little less, um, it doesn't pop as much as the new one does. And going outside, uh, notice that pod's there now. And everything, you can kind of see the detail, but the new one is a lot crisper of the lines and the rivets and everything. Um, yeah, see they're kind of washed away in the background. Just below the pilot there, the, all the lines and rivets are kind of washed away. So the new one definitely has a nicer detail on it. Uh, that's to be expected because it is newer. So that's always good. And we'll do a bit of the sounds now. I think the sounds are generally the same. Maybe uh, slight differences here and there. But we'll go. We'll do the same thing. I'll put the autopilot back on. So, almost the same sounds outside as well. I think this one has a little bit of a less whine to it, actually. I think the new one has more of a whiny engine sound. It could just be me listening to different RPMs, but um, it just sounds more whiny. This one sounds more like a, like, a, like a growl. So we're back in the A10C2 now. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the flight model changes. Let me dump all the stores. I just joined a free flight mission. Let me jump all those. And I haven't really found a major difference with the flight models. Uh, I mean, the aircraft was out for something like a 12, wasn't it 10 years already, 11 years that the old A-10 was already out. So the flight model was pretty well done. I think they did a little bit of things on the drag. Uh, you'll notice that it can hold turns a bit better. And it doesn't stall as easy. You'll notice how I can really bring this around now. I am completely light uh, and clean, I should say, but um, it just feels a little better through the turns and uh, on the rotate. Once you're taken off, it just gets off the ground a bit easier, I found. Maybe they tweak the ground effect, uh, something like that. But um, that's the biggest difference I'll, I've seen so far with the flight model. Uh, I mean, we're still, we're still a big, giant airplane <laughs> with a lot of drag, right? So, uh, I mean, you can maybe account with the, the camera thing at the bottom there gone maybe we got an extra couple knots <laughs> of, of speed but um, yeah very 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 slight differences only the the, the hardcore hog pilots will notice if uh, if there's a difference and even if they do it's it's slight and minor so transitioning from the old a10 to this a10 it'll, it's it's easy uh, if you flew the old one you can definitely fly this one this is an a10 this is a Cessna 172 with jets on it pretty much and a twin engine jets. Let me dump the stores as well, just like the last one we did. So all the all the uh, weapons are gone. And I'll take the autopilot back off, and we'll do a bit of a turn here. So we started that turn about 2:30ish. So I'll get to 2:30 and I'll start my turn, uh, or I'll, I'll 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 start pulling harder on the turn and see what the difference is flight model wise. Okay, here comes the power. So, I mean, as you can see, I mean, it's not even, it kind of turns the same. <laughs> There's slight, slight differences. I think it's really on the rotate that I've noticed it more. Um, I noticed that the new one rolls a bit quicker than this one. This one takes a little longer to roll around. So, it might just be that. Uh, I really haven't found a big standing out, you know, uh, difference at all. And uh, we're completely clean again, so... We're going to accelerate pretty good, but yeah, no no major difference um, except for the taking off. I think the new one takes off a little slicker. It's just a bit greasier off the ground. It just comes off a bit nicer. Um, other than that, nothing nothing to report that I found personally. If you found anything, let me know in the comments, and I'll give it a test and um, definitely have a look at it.
Alright, so talking about weapons, because that's what everyone likes to talk about, the fun stuff, right? So the old A-10 carried a, uh, a wide array of weapons, the new one carries the same and more. Uh, so the old one carried, for example, IR, TV-guided uh, missiles, so the Mavericks that we have on the wings here. Uh, carried G GPS, laser-guided bombs, all sorts of cool stuff. And uh, the new one carries that and a little bit more. Obviously, being an A-10, it also shares the 30mm Gatlin gun, the Avenger cannon. Alright, so we're back in the A-10 uh, 2, the new one. And you can see a little bit crisper, as I said earlier, just a little bit darker black in here as well for cockpit textures. But uh, the weapons on here, same as the old and a little bit more. So now we got, uh, we do have laser Mavericks on board. Uh, I don't know if these are actually laser Mavericks, but this aircraft can carry the laser Mavericks. It can carry the GBU-54, which is uh, that missile, that bomb right there with the little black tip at the front, on the right, on the left there. And the GBU-54 is a laser GPS guided bomb, so it can be either GPS guided or it can be laser guided. And this is helpful if you're, um, I guess in the DCS scenario, if you got to pickle a bomb through the clouds, if you can't get low for some reason, maybe either terrain or uh, SAM threat or something like that, and you can have a JTAC, uh, someone on the ground, or another aircraft possibly laser bomb in if it's not uh, if you don't have a precise area on a on a target. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this one always also carries the laser rockets, so you can actually lay something on the, shoot a rocket, lay something on the ground, and the rocket is guided, almost like a Maverick, just a little less range and uh, less warhead on it as well. It's not a, as big of an explosion. Okay, and the biggest thing in this aircraft, the uh, even if they didn't add all those cool weapons, which I mean I love, even if they didn't add that. It's still with the upgrade, just for the hell-mounted sight. Alright guys, so now we're going to get into the fun stuff. Uh, main thing I'm going to talk about is the brand new helmet-mounted queuing system. Uh, the system, uh, you can break down into doing the two things for the pilot. So what it gives you is better situational awareness, and it also gives the pilot an easier way to acquire targets slew all the sensors and gadgets in the aircraft to uh, to that target and then employ a weapon system on that. So uh, very quickly the target the helmet mounted system's on right now. Obviously I'm looking at the HUD so we won't see it, but if I turn left, you'll notice it turns on. Just by looking at this screen alone, you'll see that you have a pitch ladder in the middle. Oh, too fast. I, do, I, I will mention I fly in VR so I'm having to view with a keyboard and it's very difficult. <laughs> so if you have head tracking, much easier to use this and much more beneficial to you to use this. Either way, you can see we got speed on the left, altitude on the right, uh, radar alt, so it's barometric, radar altimeter on the bottom right, pitch ladder in the middle, and you got heading of the aircraft and heading where you're looking. So as you turn, that all changes. Looking behind us, you'll notice that we also already have some things there. So you see initial position, so it puts your waypoint there, uh, and that's the yellow box signifies that we've uh, selected that waypoint. Notice the wedding cake, so that's also set to our speed currently. And you just see the amount of situational awareness you gain from that. So now I know, you know, I took off from there, that's my airport, right? So it's, it's just really great. Um, making the helmet sensor of interest is signified by this little dot here. So if it's not there, uh, and you try to use your controls towards it, it won't work. So you got to make sure that if you're using the helmet-mounted sight, make sure the dot's there. Okay. Notice if I switch to waypoint 9, we get the yellow box and speed over the yellow box now as well, which means our um, targeting pod and, and all the sensors can be slewed to that point as well. So. Uh, it's keeping it nice and simple. Very easy to use. Some controls that are used in the helmet mounted sight, it's all the ones on the joystick for the most part. Uh, you got TMS and DMS and your China hat will affect the this as well. So let's say I want to uh, have this set as a point of interest. This, uh, let's do something interesting. This road. This little curve in the road. I'm trying my best here to <laughs> use my view. So first thing first, point your head at it. <laughs> and let's get your helmet at sight as center of interest with coolie head up twice. Once it's over the road, you're going to hold TMS forward. So TMS forward long. There it goes. 
Okay, let's make sure we have our targeting pod up on our right screen. Air to ground. Okay, now the targeting pod is actually on our little right wing. I usually put it on my left, but this is a instant action. They put it on the right, so let's turn around so the pod can see what we're looking at. Notice I can keep current track of that the entire way around of flying it, even through the canopy valve or the um, uh, metal, for lack of better words. Let's turn all the way right so the pod can see it. All right, so now we look towards our waypoint there. Now the helmet is still sensor of interest. You can see the dot there. We're going to hit DMS Delta, DMS left once, and the targeting pod pops up on the head. Now because this is set to our SPI, we're going to hit and hold China Hat forward long. There goes the pod. So the pod is slewed right to the waypoint there. Very nice. And then, zoom in even more if you want. I can make the targeting pod center of interest with Cooley Hat right long. Okay, and you can change your uh, white hot, black hot, your flare modes. And you can still slew the pod, and you can look through the um, helmet at your target and slew the pod all at once and zoom and do all your cool stuff. Looks like you picked up a river there. I will say it's sometimes hard when you're looking uh, down uh, towards grass and things like that because it kind of gets blended in. So uh, maybe at nighttime this would be very useful as well. Or if you notice in the cockpit, you can see uh, the green on the black, you can really see how beneficial that could be at nighttime. All right, now we're going to talk about some controls. Uh, if you're coming from the old A-10 to the new A-10, there's some things you need to know. Um, the main one that I found that's a little hard to get used to is before, with China Hat aft short and your targeting pod center of interest, you were able to uh, recenter the pod back to your HUD. Notice if I do that now, it activates laser search, uh, and I can't, it won't let you recenter it with China Hat aft. The only way to do that, um, I guess if you'd want to, is hit standby, back to air to ground, and uh, then it's back to the HUD. Uh, that's the only way to do that. Now, I believe the reason for this is you don't really need to center it because I can just look anywhere and place the pod anywhere I want. So I believe that's why it's like that. Um, so if I just look here, China hat forward long, there goes the pod, right? So I believe that's why they did that. Um, and so you don't really need to recenter the pod anymore if you think about it. Another thing that you can look at, um, as you notice on the TAD, speed off and on doesn't work anymore. And DMS left, because DMS left used to be the thing to do it, uh, just turns off the helm mounted queuing system, even with the TAD SOI. So the new button for that is TMS left, Tango. And that's new because it used to be Delta. So notice, SPI on off, TMS left does that. And you can see it move on the joystick, TMS, TMS. DMS left does the helmet. Okay, speaking of some helmet stuff, uh, as we said, DMS left will turn it off and on. And if we make it sensor of interest, uh, DMS down, so Delta, data management switch down, brings the brightness lower. DMS up, brings the brightness up. Uh, DMS right will change profiles to declutter it, as you can see. And there's various other buttons here and there. Um, DMS left short will toggle the pod. And long, as I said, turns off the pod. Uh, everything else stayed the same. Uh, China, Hat, uh, the China Hat's the one that changed with the TGP for recentering. And the TMS left now does this B instead of TMS right. Or, disc, excuse me, DMS left. Uh, everything else should be the same, boat switch is the same, um, everything else, coolie hats should all be the same, and all that. So, hope you enjoyed this video, the differences between the A-10 Classic and the A-10 Charlie 2. Definitely a great upgrade to DCS, I can't wait to see what they do further, especially with the um, F-16, I'm really loving the F-16 right now, uh, with the new Mavericks. I mean, even, look, I'm just going to stop myself. Look at the dents. You can see a little bit of the dents from them trying to refuel and all that. I mean, it's crazy detail. So, uh, great to see that this aircraft is working nicely and uh, is all there. 
So we'll see you in the next one. F14 real startup videos coming out soon. Uh, give it about a day. I just need someone to, st um, to just be in the front seat while I start in the back seat because uh, it's a bit easier to do that without someone in, uh, AI in the front. So we'll see you guys in the next video. And uh, if, as always, you're welcome to comment below if you've learned something else that I didn't talk about. And uh, as well, the Discord will be down below where I fly. Always welcome to join and ask questions about DCS, uh, civilian flying, real life training, and, uh, and things like that. So you're more than welcome to do that. Alright guys, see you in the next video.